my image of Rosary Army was just boxes and boxes of rosary stuff and then a bunch of like spun how do you say that knotted rosaries yeah yeah and then so when you say it's your image it's not what you imagined this is what no, this you're, is you're what talking i about, saw you have what yeah, you yeah, saw yeah. okay yeah so <laughs> explain funny. the whole all of what rosary army is no all of it i mean <laughs> so, some of it okay um i can tell you how it started mm -hmm. um i tell the story I feel like I tell this story every single week. Um, in the summer of 2002, I went to confession, and no one was in line when I when I arrived on a Saturday afternoon. And so I walked right in, and the, the priest uh, was sitting there, and he had this single-decade knotted rosary, but it wasn't like the kind of twine that we use now. It was like this really thick uh, parachute jump rope. Mm -hmm. But I remember just seeing it <clears throat> as I sat down, and I uh, thought, oh, that's kind of cool. And then I confessed my sins, gave absolution. I walked out, and I didn't think about it again. And it wasn't until um, literally like two months later in September of 2002, and I was working in the IT industry. And your dad always makes fun of me whenever I say when I used to work in the <laughs> IT industry. That's like one of my catchphrases, apparently. But I spent 10 years you know, doing software development stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting in my cube, and I... For no reason whatsoever, I remember that rosary, and I just was overwhelmed with this compulsion. I, I needed to learn how to make one of those things. And, you know, I like to paint and write, but I've never considered myself a very crafty guy, mm -hmm. you know? So getting twine and making things with my fingers, it wasn't something that I, you know, <laughs> I endeavored to do. Uh -huh. But I, um, I went to, like, every store. I went to Hobby Lobby. I went to Michael's. I went to, like, every hobby store and every fabric store I could find. And no one had this this particular type of twine. It's number 36 nylon twine. And so I went to uh, – I finally gave in. I just bought this – do you know what macrame is? It was a big thing in the 70s. Mm -mm. Look up macrame owls. Macrame owls. You will find – you, you will probably find some great parody websites talking about how <laughs> how weird the seventies were. Uh -huh. But it's like so it's like twine and you, it's you know kind of like knitting, but it's not. You're making these weird designs with this thick cord. And, and I mean, ho every home in the seventies had a macrame owl hanging on the walls. This is a flat owl <laughs> that's like knit with like two bulbous brown like wood eyes and then you'd just go out in your backyard and find a stick and then you'd, you'd, you'd knit these feet on it uh -huh. and, you, and then you put one at the top too to hang it and you say hey it's just i'm, I'm I, I gotta show you hold on i mean it's like so you type in macrame owl and, and people at home can can uh, do the same thing i'm, yes, I'm telling yeah, you yeah. i'm telling you i've never googled this before <laughs> you're, you're, you're gonna see a thousand of these okay. I, I can guarantee it so right away there you go, macrame owls. Oh yeah, I've seen those. You see before. these? Yeah. This right there. Look at that on Etsy. You could buy one now for thirty nine dollars. But I mean, just look. I mean, they're just they all look like this one. Uh huh. So anyway, so I, I used macrame twine or macrame cord, and I made my first rosary, and it was just. I tell people, I said it was the ugliest rosary you've ever seen. It was just <laughs> that it, and I think we have one of the first ones I made downstairs. But I, I just was kind of hooked. I mean, I, when I finished that first one, and then I started giving them away to people like almost immediately. Mm -hmm. And my son Ben had was like six months old at the time, and we went to the beach like a week or two after I started making these things. And we're at the beach, and I remember so clearly like we're walking down the beach, and and you know either me or Jennifer had Ben like you know straddled in the little whatever it is the pompoose or whatever it's called. Other kids running around, and I'm on the beach. You know, at sunset, making the rosary, and I got like 20 feet of twine dangling in the wind behind me. But I just, uh -huh. I, I couldn't stop making these things and just kept giving them away, giving them away. So, so the, the reason why I kept honing in on September of 2002 is something really important happened the next month. I, I felt like, so here's this new thing I found. I was, I'm making rosaries. It's all about me. You know, it's this my thing that I'm mm -hmm. doing. Well, then the very next month, October of 2002, uh, Pope St. John Paul II declared the year of the rosary. Mm. And he released a letter in October of that year called Rosarium Virginis Mariae, kind of like trying to re-infuse the rosary into our culture again. And he added the Loomis Mysteries of the Rosary at that time. So the, the, oh, those, haven't wow. been, those haven't been around very long. They've only yeah. been around for 22 years. And I, I remember I had never been so excited before for something out of the church because it's like my faith was kind of waking up as I was doing this. You know, so mm -hmm. it had already been there. I had this faith in Jesus, but it's like my, my faith in Catholicism and understanding Catholicism and diving deeply into Catholicism and understanding I'd never had a devotion to the rosary before. I mm -hmm. never really understood it. And, uh, you know, 
so when that letter came out, I literally, I, there was rumors of it the day before, and I literally jumped out of bed that morning and <laughs> ran across the room because we didn't have the cell phones yet, right? We uh-huh. had we had the computers that were hardwired, and you had to still do dial-in, mm-hmm. or dial-up, but, right? So I'm like going in, and we're like, connecting to the Vatican <laughs> and that there was this letter and I was just so I was so excited this really happened because I felt like I felt like God was doing something in my life yeah I mean it's like that timing that timing was was unexplainable mm-hmm. why would why would I after all these years all of a sudden have this compulsion to make rosaries and start doing them like the month before all right so then fast forward I kept doing this over the next few months and it just made more and more and more and more of them. And I'm like begging Jennifer. I'm like, can I have eight more dollars to buy another spool of twine? You know? <laughs> and we had a little basket back in our closet that I could, I only had like two spools or two colors at a time and a pair of scissors and a little cigarette lighter. And that was the start of Rosary Army. But I was asked to go on, um, as a, as a, um, chaperone for a teen retreat in March of 2003. Mm-hmm. And they asked me to give a talk about John Paul II his love of Mary and of the rosary. And so um, I gave this talk and it was completely unplanned. And I told the story that I just told you just now. And I said, you know, at first there was this feeling that it was all about me. And then I realized it's not all about me. It's about Jesus. And it's like, I all of a sudden felt like there's other people doing rosary related things and the world needs the rosary. And I felt like I was a part of an army. And it was just a throwaway comment. I, I totally didn't plan it. It was spontaneous. And, and honestly, I forgot I even said it once I said it. Uh-huh. Except I, that was the first time I taught a group of teens how to make these rosaries. And I taught them the basic knots, gave them a piece of scrap. They got that down. And once they figured it out and showed me their knots, I'd give them a full you know, length of twine. And they went off and they were making the rosaries. And all weekend long, these, these um, teens who were, you know, at the time were your age and are now in their 30s you mm-hmm. know, and have families and everything, which is really wild to me. Um, it makes me feel kind of old. Um, <laughs> All weekend long, they'd come up to me with their finished rosaries and say, look, I'm in the army now. Look, I'm in the <laughs> army now. And driving home that night, I realized what we need to do. And that night, I got home and I went online. And it was literally 20 years ago this week. Wow. That rosaryarmy.com went online. Dang. And I registered the URL and I put up a simple website. And and the idea was, I, I said, if you want a free rosary, I'll send you one free rosary. Print out this form, mail it to this address. You literally used to have people sitting it to our home address because I was like, no one's ever going to see this. And, and what could go bad if you put your home address on the internet? Uh-huh. I mean, you know, that could never, that could never uh, backfire on you. Uh, and about two weeks later, this this dude named Steve in Texas, <laughs> a guy in Texas named Steve, who's now a deacon. Wow. Um, sent a request. He was the first one to ever send a request for a rosary. And, uh, Steve D. Uh, actually, got a chance. To, he came to Atlanta a, a couple years later. And I went. You picked, met him. I went and picked him up at the airport or at his hotel. I brought him back to our house. We made tacos and and not, I mean, it's like this is the, this this guy with us was a celebrity. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that was the start of Rosemary, right? So that was that was twenty years ago this month. 